most of us, when we think about the concept of First Lady, we either have two sometimes diametrically opposite and conflicting interpretations. Either they're the greatest wives on the planet, their first mom, they never engage in politics and policy, or on the other hand, that in fact they're co-presidents, who elected her anyway, why is she involved in messing up the government? And in reality, I think it's much more complicated, especially as we enter the post-Watergate era, which is what I'm going to talk about at the end of the day. What I hope that you'll get a sense of today is how unique the role is. And it's up to the woman that's in that role to carve out a relationship for herself with the American people. And not every first lady wants to do this. Not every first lady even talks to her husband about policy. For example, Mamie Eisenhower proudly boasted that never once in her time in the White House did she ask her husband how his day was. <laughs> no, and I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, to generate a laugh. I'm saying that it was that she saw her primary role is helping Eisenhower shed the burdens of office when he came home. Other women from the beginning of time are involved in policy discussions. We can trace Martha Washington's involvement with treaty negotiations. We're going to begin today's in-depth conversation with Abigail Adams. Now, Dolly Madison is not involved in policy, but you cannot tell me, nor can you tell any scholar or any serious assessor of the Madison presidency and the Jefferson presidency that she does not have a huge influence on the political climate in Washington. The women who come after that sort of recede. Then you have Mary Todd Lincoln, who's part Abigail Adams and part Mamie Eisenhower and part Eleanor Roosevelt. She is not the roving, psychic, nutcase first lady that popular culture wants to depict her as. Mary Todd Lincoln had real guts and real pressures and profound sadness and dealt with a husband who was a giant but who by all accounts was an extreme manic depressive. And she saw during her time in the White House her relatives' deaths being disengaged or disassociated by her southern relatives and her beloved son's death and saw her husband continually sink into melancholy as he faced the greatest crisis the nation had ever seen. So let's firebomb that stereotype. 